Hi, Wizard Dragon here, bringing you another video. Um, it's not so windy today, so hopefully the audio will be a little better. Sorry about that last video. Um, I have found a place now, so that'll be just a little short update. I got a very nice situation. Uh, it's going to be pretty sweet that I've landed in. And I may do more videos on that later, but I don't want to get too specific about the spot where I've landed because I don't want to seem like I'm bragging. But um, I'll outline it later. A few, few short updates. I am working on a collected um, group of stories that will be I'll be putting together later this year with some poetry. I've been working on it for years. I just, you know, haven't ever taken the time to collect it all in an organized fashion. So I'm doing that this year. It's all there. I just got to put it together, basically, which will take some logistic time. Logistics and time. But I have assistance, so... Um, other than that, I guess I want to start out today's uh, rant is, is going to be about tattoos because there's been some new developments here in uh, my life. And and I, and I guess I want to preface this by saying what, you know, there's a big debate right now in the body modification movement and or whatever you want to call it. I even hate calling it that because it sounds so fucking pretentious, to be honest with you. Um, I like the modern primitive way of descri describing it. Like... Tattoos are older than, and I've done videos on the history of tattoos and stuff, but tattoos are older than any organized religion. I mean, as soon as man figured out he could modify his body and change it, he began to do that. Whether it was cutting the hair, painting one's face, piercing one's ears or other dangly bits, um, or etching symbols on one. So, to me, tattoos have been very... Tattoos are very ancient, and the the b debate nowadays is is basically uh, between professionals and people that tattoo out of their house, which I fall into the second category. I am technically what uh, tattoo artists that are tattooing in a shop would call a scratcher, um, and you know I'm, I'm careful about what I do. I don't take on. I don't have a lot of clients, and that's why it's hard to grow my business, because I have to trust somebody and know them, you know, pretty well before I invite them into my sanctuary, my home, and practice what I consider to be the most ancient blood magic on this planet, which is tattooing. So, and I know that even sounds a bit pretentious, but that's how I look at tattoos. They change people. They change people whether they know it or not. They are powerful, powerful things in one's life that one can choose to adorn one with. And because of that, I don't think it's, you know, the first time I saw tattooing done was like in real life. I mean, I'd seen tattoos. I had, my, my grandpa had a, my grandpa on my mom's side, uh, William, oh, not William, oh, what is my, I didn't know my grandparents that well, so forgive me for forgiving, for not remembering their name. Gene, Grandpa Gene. Wheeler. Yeah, that was my mom's dad. He uh, he was a cool individual. He he got the silver star from the President of the United States and a Purple Heart. Uh, he was in World War II in the Korean War, I believe. He was a Marine gunner. Um, big guy. Six foot three or four. And you know, he came back with some stories and some demons. But uh, he had a panther on his arm. A big friggin' panther on. I believe it was his left forearm upper on top left forearm and uh, that was my early like remembrance of a, a tattoo on a family member and I remember him telling me not to get tattoos I remember that I do remember him saying wash my elbows and never get any tattoos people could see so I probably, I'm sure and made him a little sad maybe when he was looking down at me from from beyond but uh the first time I saw tattooing done was my high school teacher, Sam, who, he he was doing them out of his house. He was using a very primitive setup, and, you know, I think he had some Huck Spaulding machines, and, I mean, he had good he had good machines. I remember his machines weren't, you know, they were, they were good enough to get the job done, but he didn't have, like, an autoclave or a real power supply. He had, like, a battery with this old Rio Stat setup you could buy from Huck Spaulding, which actually is pretty cool, because... I might pick one up just because no matter what, if you had a car battery laying around, you could tattoo with this setup he had, which was pretty cool. 
So, um, you know, he was tattooing somebody at his house. He was a history teacher that saw that I had a inclination towards the arts, and he, um, I may have even told this story on YouTube, but the point is, uh, the first time I saw um, tattooing done, it, 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 it horrified me a little bit, to be honest with you. I was like, wow, it was, it was horrifyingly appealing, if that makes any sense. Like, I mean, I was an artist, so I loved symbols and graphics and such, but um, I was also raised pretty conservatively and religiously, so um, I'd been somewhat programmed with the the fear of, um, not fear, but just aversion to certain things that were taboo, and which brings me to my next point, like, I, that's, that's the thing, like, even as a young, young man, I could recognize the value and power of such a process, and, and that's why I mention it, because, um, that's, I hold it in high regard, I, I don't, I don't, just do it for the sake of to make a few dollars or you know I, I tattoo I haven't made I'd say I haven't made very much money at all in in the last three years tattooing steadily which is what I've been trying to do is steadily tattoo for the last three years um, since 2011 I mean I took a little break but um you know it's not something I, I got into I mean, eventually I'd like to make some money doing it just because it's, it takes a lot of my time and I've poured a lot of energy into it. But I don't expect to make any real money at it for another three or four, maybe even five years. It takes time to get good. I need more practice. I admit that. But it still doesn't discount or dismiss the tattoos that I've done. Like, I have gone out of my way to take on simpler pieces and do things that I know I can make, I can make permanent. Um, my tattooing's not to the level where I attempt super complicated pieces yet because I do have a respect for the art and I don't want to promise somebody something that I can't perform or you know and then have them have a, a regretful symbol on their body I mean I, I honestly probably did that a few times upon learning at the Denver Body Art School where I went which kind of sucks because it wasn't like my intention but there's not a tattoo artist out there that hasn't made a mistake. And I guess that's what makes me a little bit... I woke up and I was thinking about the whole... Um, the last couple of weeks I've been looking in to get a shop. You know, getting renting a shop. And the first place I called down in Lakewood was in a, in a strip mall. And the guy tells me, well, I got to talk to the owners. Or no, he didn't tell me he had to talk to the owners. He said it, it probably wouldn't be allowed because TJ Maxx and Sprouts were opening... A business in that strip mall and they have in their contract that they will not open a uh, a shop in where they won't open their business where there's a tattoo shop that's in their like rental contract that they make with these strip malls so um, that kind of bummed me out because I didn't know there was such things I guess and then okay so that was in Denver and then I come back to Boulder which you know I live in Boulder County like Everybody's heard of Boulder, Colorado. It's supposed to be progressive. All these fucking hippies and shit. These new agers. So I go to rent a... Uh, you know, and I'm into that stuff too. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't discredit new age, hippy-dippy, Christianity or whatever itity, ism or, you know, philosophy that one holds to. I'm not trying to degenerate it. But, uh proves where the, the pudding is or you know put your money where your mouth is to use another cliche you know they, they make it where they say that what I'm doing is illegal and then when I try to do things the legal way they categorize me in a way that contradicts my philosophy and love of my craft so in Boulder County I'm calling around and they they call it promiscuous usage is how they deem my business um, it's the same as it's the same as uh, opening a head shop or a porn shop. Um, it's only a zone for certain places. It's only allowed uh, in certain sections of town, I guess. So for being a progressive county, you know, it bums me out. And, you know, it's not like, and, and the thing is, I'm honest about my tattooing. And when I open a shop, I'm going to look for some tattoo artists that are better than me so I can learn more. I'm going to make a seat available and, inter you know, 
higher, slowly, fire fast kind of deal. I don't, I'm not gonna advertise myself personally as a tattoo artist that can do Kat Von D, Ink Master style work yet, because maybe in 10 years, maybe not. You know, I can do tribal, I can do symbols, I can do any comic book stuff, solid colors. I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm not an ink master by any stretch of the word, nor will I be for many, many years. So, you know, I, I, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't have the opportunity to practice my craft and get better without breaking the law, because this is my craft. This is obviously my love is <clears throat> for tattooing and I, I've given more to it than anything else in my life. So at this point, I'm all in. There ain't no going back. Like, this is what I'm going to do. And the city has made it more difficult for me to do what I like to do the right way. And that, therefore, pro proposes a moral dilemma for me because I like to not have to go outside the system and do things the wrong way, but when one is not allowed to practice one's God-given rights, one has to go outside the parameters of what is considered lawful. I mean, I can't put it as eloquently as some of our forefathers, but I'm sure three or four of them motherfuckers said something like that, you know? We are allowed to be free. We are allowed to do what, what two, con two consenting adults do in the privacy of their home should be no man's business or woman's. You know, I'm back at the cemetery. I like this little cemetery. I always wanted to visit it, but I never was walking around here in town, so I kind of like it. So yeah, I'm gonna sit down and do the rest of this video. I'm at 12 minutes. You know, I, I, I was trying to keep my video short for a while, but now I don't care if you watch them. I don't care if people listen to them. I like talking, and a lot of the stuff I'm using, a lot of the reason I'm doing doing them this way is because eventually I'm going to type all this stuff up, and it's a good way just to get it out, out some of my stories, some of my ideas. Um, it's a good way to cat. It's like a diary, but I don't have to put a pen to paper. Um, so, yeah, that's my dilemma right now. Like, I am technically a scratcher. I don't tattoo legally. I have very few clients that I trust because of this, and my, my business has grown slowly over the last three or four years. And I, you know, and the thing is, I see people that have money that with less talent than me, open up a crappy shop in a shit part of town and just scratch away for a year to get better. That you know, and honestly, I've seen this happen a few times. There's there's ten thousand shops in Denver, three or four thousand dollars, and you can open a shop, but you're in a in a bad part of town, and you're next to t ten other tattoo artists in a mile area. So competition's a little more fierce. And I, not that I mind that, but you don't make any money is the point I'm making. I'll make just as much money tattooing the way I am out of my house and not have to deal with a whole bunch of drama. You know, I'm not to the point, I have worked at other shops. I don't like most tattoo artists, including myself sometimes, are major friggin' flaming anuses. I mean, they're just assholes. And I don't mean to be crude, but I mean, there's a lot of ego involved in the tattoo industry and I have definitely been guilty of that too. And, and I try to keep myself humble and realize that no, this is a gift that I've been given and it's, it's my responsibility not to honor the state, not to honor myself but honor those that have come before me, you know, the, the undead so to speak of this of this world that made it possible for me to live in this moment, in this time with all these blessings and I do that, I honor them I, I they paid for my my you know, my blessings, my lucky existence to be able to pursue the arts and not have to worry about things that we all take for granted nowadays like where I'm going to sleep and where I'm going to eat what am I going to eat you know where's clean water and you know even some people still worry about that lots of people on this planet so I am grateful for all that I don't know just getting in a tangent but tattooing is my my, my gig and I uh I don't I don't think it's right the way they've you know, and that's the thing. I don't think it's right what a lot of tattoo artists do now either. Like, so goddamn judgmental of other tattoos. Like, you know, it's all subjective, people. Art is subjective. You know, your interpretation of what something should look like. Yeah, there's, you know, I admit there's a difference between a rose and a pile of shit. There definitely is common ideas we all share that make not it truly subjective to the point of, you know, 
hallucination. But that being said, if somebody wants to have a heart, you know, with some baby feet underneath it and somebody's name and an old English on top of it, or just anything, it's not tattoo artist's job to tell people what looks good and what is right aesthetically on somebody else's body. Um, I mean, we can guide them and give them our opinions, which I do. I try to make things fit and I definitely take, keep in mind the canvas and the location and, and things of that sort. But at the same time, I, uh, I don't change people's ideas to the point of them not being recognizable, which I've seen happen at shops. I've had tattoo artists do that to me throughout this journey in the tattoo world, like come to them with an idea and they're professionals and I come out with something that wasn't what I had in mind just because they were lazy, quite honestly, a lot of them. So, you know, that's just my, uh, just my opinion. I'd like to get some debate going on this. I may write a shorter version of this because it, it sucks because I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in the middle. I'm not like a scratcher to the point where I'm just doing crap, you know, busting, busting out nasty ass disease ridden tattoos four or five times a week to make twenty dollars hell no i screen my people carefully and the pieces i take on actually for the, my really close friends i've been working on for many many sessions and i'm very careful not to i, I use all the standard protocol of shop wood and then some just because i know it is dangerous to not be hygienic and clean i'm beyond clean in my own personal you know life and habits of cleanliness anyways like i just I'm anal about it. I mean, I'm I'm almost OCD about. It. I I am OCD about it. I mean, I definitely make sure what I'm doing is is clean uh, because it's part of what what I'm doing. I, you know, tattooing is something you cannot consciously. I mean, you can you can relax a little bit about it sometimes, but not when I I don't know. Anyways, I've rambled enough about that. So I, I guess the debate is whether and and the debate on tattoos like the scratcher versus professional shop way of doing things and and what i see is the professional way is just a big money sucking legality you know that doesn't honor tattooing in its primitive nature it discounts it and you know relinquishes it to a a standing of wrong which to me is not a moral decision that any professional any professional um taken off in the cemetery now, so I'm going to give it a little second. Any professional tattoo establishment or artist has the right to do. And then there's the primitive, you know, art that's discounted too. Like, I I like primitive tattoos. I like, I like tattoos that aren't perfect. I like, there's too much focus on perfection in the tattoo world now, and I... I know, yeah, everybody wants the perfect tattoo, but, man, you learn a lot by having a shitty tattoo. <laughs> you, uh, I've walked around with shitty tattoos on my face for fucking five, six years, and it makes you a stronger person. I'm not advocating people do that. Most people couldn't um, without, you know, really regretting it. I don't. I, I see the value in every experience, even the bad. That, and, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not trying to use it as an advocation for bad tattoos. I'm not. I'm just saying, if, if a couple of guys get together and... You know, young young guys and their their homies and they even if the alcohol's involved they have a few beers and one guy's got a tattoo rig and he tattoos some fucked up tattoo on his buddy to me that's just as powerful and magical as more magical and powerful than some serene situation where some yuppified hipster college kid walks into a shop and lays down four hundred dollars and gets a perfectly done Japanese style koi fish that you know cost him two thousand dollars like that to me is less powerful and magical than the previous scenario and that's what i'm trying to say about scratch and scratchers and not that i do those kind of tattoos but i mean i, I see the value in them i don't discount them so i know i'm going on 20 minutes here i guess i'll wrap this video up it's just my uh my humble opinion of the day because i'm kind of stuck in the middle like i'm I'm, I'm not a scratcher. I'm not a professional. I mean, I know I could go work for a shop in, in Denver, right? There's plenty of shops out there that have equal skill or even a little less skill. And I, I almost work for one in Boulder, but man, there's a different sort of version I have to that situation. Like those guys are just, I don't know. I just, they're not, it's not the environment I want to work in. Like they're, they're
they're not honoring you in a, in a different way. I don't know. I'm just very particular about the way I tattoo and the way I look at it. I, t I take it a little more seriously than even the, the 20 year olds that are opening shops. And I take it less seriously than the old school guys just because they're so draconic in the way that they practice it with their equipment and stuff. Like they're just not open minded to the future. And so I'm kind of stuck in the middle between a scratcher and a professional, between a. You know, somebody, I mean, I have tattoos of all different styles and qualities and, and skill, skill levels, and I plan on getting more. I don't, I mean, I, I, that's the thing that kind of sucks about actually getting a tattoo at a shop, and this is from my own personal experience. Unless you really know the, the artist or taking the time to get to know them, um, it's gotten so popular that you can't, tattoo artists are so confined with their time now, you don't get to know them, you don't get to hang out with them, and I've got, I don't know, I've always been looking for more than just somebody that's going to give me a tattoo. I'm looking for somebody, I, I mean, you're going to spend some time with them. You're going to have an exchange of energy. So, you know, in that way, it, it, it's changed. Like, uh, I mean, I've gotten some really high-level work done lately on my body from very high-end 20-year-plus veteran tattooers that are charging $150 plus an hour to work on me. And I don't know. Yeah, got some awesome tattoos side of the deal. I don't know these guys. I don't, they, they're too busy to give me the chance to know them. So, and, and I understand it. You gotta make money. Um, so yeah. I, uh, I see the value in protecting one's tattoo from the sun so that you don't have to go back in 10 years and get it redone. No. I see, I see the value in, um, going and I just see the value in all the spectrum the whole spectrum of it and I don't discount it and I guess that's what I'm sick of seeing on a lot of these I mean there's just snobs man people are just so stuck up on their fucking opinion of shit and I, I try not to be that way like I know I do have an opinion that's pretty much why I start this channel and shit but I try to keep in mind that if I am shown that my opinion is small minded or wrong or negative I would change it you know if, if I'm not correct and what I believe. I obviously don't want to be ignorant. That being said, this video is running a little long. Please, any comments would be appreciated and welcomed on my channel as usual. Um, it's not as windy today, but there are a lot of cars going by. So, Pirate Wizard Dragon here. Um, also, I, you know, I'm playing with the idea of starting a, a separate channel, maybe even three channels. One on <clears throat> just purely tattooing, like split this channel up between my personal videos like this market a whole different channel for tattooing and <clears throat> the next two years of taking it to the next level of tattooing and learning and you know sharing my knowledge there and then doing a third video just <clears throat> focusing on other people in the community around me that I find interesting <clears throat> and, and interviewing them I mean in some ways you get to know me a little better if you see me interview somebody else too so there's that aspect of it but I wanted to separate them from this channel, which I would keep primarily as my personal blog, diary, you know, ranting channel. Thank you for your time, and uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, or any opinions are welcome. Bye.